Okay, so let's let's start for today's yeah. Okay, let's start for today's yeah. newspaper. So, uh, government bans import of one zero one defense equipment items, push to Atmanirbhar initiative. So we know that recently the government has focused more on becoming self reliance in terms of many productions. So government have also banned uh, around one zero one defense equipment from um, other countries. And the negative list from December, domestic firms could not get orders with rupees 4 lakh crore. So, uh, pursuant to the Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman's announcement in May to boost the domestic defense sector, the government on Sunday announced a ban on import of 101 weapons and platforms and equipment. So, the negative import, uh, negative import list will come into effect from December, that is coming in December and will be progressive, which means the import ban could be extended to more actors. So the move is aimed at boosting the defense manufacturing sector in the country with government groups can act as an engine to revive long-term economic growth and estimated to be 4 lakh crore rupees worth of orders for the armed forces are likely to be placed with the domestic manufacturer over the next year. So this initiative or this what you can say the policy of the government is uh, looked as what you can say the step towards becoming a Atma Nirvan Bharat. Okay, so as been so in that the early years uh, there used to be what you can say uh, important export of the uh, defense material but now it will not happen there. So explain some of the equipments which have been on the ban list that is sniper rifle, then sidebound cruise missile, short range surface to air missiles, then light combat aircraft and fixed winning mini U UAV. UAV means that is uh, a drone, then build uh, armored fighting vehicles and light machine gun and assault rifle. These are the some of the requisite equipments which are in the ban list. A signal to home uh, home, uh, so home to home defense industry that is what is mentioned here, but commitment to face challenges. So as the Rising defense imports bill over the past two decades has constrained India's strategic rise. The goal of making the country self-reliant in defense production has been on the priority list of defense ministers, especially after 1999 Kargil war. The Make in India scheme in, announced in 2014 aimed at to develop the indigenous defense uh, industry but has failed to achieve its target. So we know that in paper three, there is one topic called indigenization of technology. So in that topic, we need to know that uh, in which what you can say uh, the industries or in which technology is the how India is trying to indigenize. Indigenization is what? If manufacturing on what you can say, uh, manufacturing of that particular uh, technologies in India itself. So you should read this article. You should uh, you can keep it in paper three topic. Uh, India's policies are related to the trade and commerce. And also, you can keep this topic as an indigenization uh, initiative by the government of India in paper three. So there is one more article. Uh, there is one more article about the uh, Viral Acharya. We have seen that Viral Acharya was the former deputy governor, and he says that can't make transfer to households in COVID because we haven't an open debate on fiscal. So this is about the fiscal policies. We will read about it in the explained page today. Check okay, going to the next uh, page. It's a very, very important article which is mentioned here to check the post harvest vestiges. We have seen that one of the important problems of the farmers in India, while they are not able to income increase their income, is about what you can say the post harvest vestiges which is incurred by the farmer. So, paper three topic the issues related to agricultural farm incomes and uh, what you can say agricultural farm incomes and uh, as well as what you can say the vestiges of the agricultural fields. So, to check that post harvest vestige, Prime Minister has launched rupees one lakh crore agri infrastructure fund. So, in today's uh, economic test, I have asked one questions related to this particular agriculture infrastructure fund. So, this agricultural infrastructure fund will create a financing facility which will be given to the agro producer companies as well as what you can say the agri related infrastructure creations uh, the fund will be given here so calling the vestige of post harvest produce a big problem prime minister narendra modi on sunday launched rupees 1 lakh crore central financing scheme under the agriculture infrastructure fund that is aimed at helping farmers and agri entrepreneurs build 
post harvest agriculture infrastructure so the scheme which was announced as a part of the government's rupees 20 lakh crore atmanirbhar bharat package we know that a few days back government has already decided the atmanirbhar bharat package so in that atmanirbhar bharat package 20 lakh crore rupees package was announced out of the 20 lakh crore rupees 1 lakh crore rupees will be spent on agri infrastructure so a 20 lakh crore rupees atmanirbhar package in response to covid pandemic in may was approved by the union cabinet on july 8th it will be implemented over 10 years from 2020 to 2029 so this 1 lakh crore rupees will be spent by the government of, uh, in the coming what we can say the uh, coming 10 years so the spending on the agri infrastructure will be a planned expenditure or it will be a non planned expenditure which, which category it will come it will come under the a non planned expenditure or planned expenditure yes gitanjali what do you think it will come under the planned or non planned expenditure swati planned expenditure sir okay jasmine Plan expenditure, sir. Yes, it will come under the plan expenditure because it will be plan a future expenditure. expenditure, right? Okay, now going to the next that is calling. Uh, so, that is what is mentioned here. So, under the scheme, rupees 1 lakh crore will be provided by banks and financial institutions as loans to farmers, primary agricultural credit societies, farmer producers organization that is FPOs, and self help groups, self help groups, and other for building community farming. So it's a very very important initiative because we need to encourage such type of activities uh, that is to in increase the income of the farmer that is what is mentioned here going to the next punch on the agri infra fund uh, then post harvest agricultural infrastructure so these assets will enable farmers to get greater value for their produce as they will be able to store and sell at higher prices reduce wastage and increase processing and value addition so we so need to not be not uh, I'm audible now. One second. Huh? I'm getting a call. So that's why my voice is not. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm audible now. Yasmin? Yes, sir. Okay, sorry. So we know that he, one of the important problem of the Indian farmers is that it, due to the lack of the post harvesting infrastructure, due to the lack of cold storage facilities, due to the lack of what we can say, uh, lack of not having the process processing of the agricultural produce, the income of the farmers used to be what you can say very low because many agricultural items are perishable and they can be what you can say it could be wasted if it is not stored properly or if it is not processed properly and if it is not what you can say the value is not addition uh, added to the, the agricultural produces so this assets this agricultural infrastructure or the post harvest agricultural infrastructure like cold storage and what you can say the uh, processing unit all these things this will enable farmers to get greater value for their produce as they will be able to store and sell at higher prices reduce wastage and increase processing and value addition Today, only 30 days after the cabinet formally approved the scheme, the first sanction of over 1,000 crore was made to over 2280 farmer societies. So, farmer societies have got 1,000 crore rupees, or you can say the money, to start such type of post-harvest agricultural infrastructure. So, launching the scheme, the Prime Minister states it will help in creating better storage and modern cold storage chains in villages. Uh, the scheme will create employment opportunities in villages. So saying vestiges of post harvest produce hurts the farmers and causes a lot of damage to the country, Prime Minister said, referring to the recent amendments to the Essential Commodities Act said, to deal with these legal hurdles are being removed on one hand and farmers are being given direct help to the other, that is what is mentioned here. So he said Essential Commodities Act was reason why good warehouses could not be build, built in villages and agro based industries could not get encouragement today the agricultural infrastructure fund has been launched so that farmers will be able to create modern facilities for storage in their villages he said adding that farmers will get a three percent interest rebate on loans provided under this scheme so 
if the uh, farmers uh, creates such type of what you can say the infrastructure by taking loan from the government so they will be given 3% interest rebate it's a kind of indirect subsidy given by the government to encourage such types of cold storage facilities the prime minister interacted virtually with members of three agricultural credit societies from Karnataka, Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh states that are among the initial beneficiaries of the agri infra fund scheme at the same event the prime minister also released the sixth statement under the pm kisan scheme of rupees 1700 crore to nearly 8.5 crore farms so that is what is mentioned here so this is a very important article because it this is related to the paper three topic uh, that is the issues related to the agricultural farm produce issues related to the buffer stock various msp so we know that one of the important problem of the farmers in india is what you can say not having proper agricultural infrastructure and supply chain problem so that can be solved by this particular agricultural infra fund so question can be asked in prelims as well as in mains prelims question can be asked that consider the following statements regarding the agri infra fund so there will be two three statements you are supposed to uh, find out which one is the correct statement and in the main yes, exam voice is breaking is it okay now hello is it okay now hello hello mustakim anant am i audible now yes sir you are yes sir now. okay fine so in the mains exam question can be asked uh, discuss the agri infrastructure fund created by the government and how it will help in increasing the income of the farmers so such type of question can be asked in the mains exam so cut this article and put it in paper three topic uh, agricultural infrastructure in paper three fine check going to the next page So here there is one article which is written, written, uh, written regarding the recent government initiatives to ban the import of the equipment because it mentioned that okay, there are some problems and there are some challenges also because we know that the okay, Indian domestic manufacturers are not having the capacity to produce the defense equipment. So that is one of the important particulars so the uh, loophole of the particular initiative taken by the government. Here it is mentioned that the okay, import embargo on 101 defense satellites. So government entities, public sector undertakings should get preference for research and development and production. So read this article that what are the challenges in front of the India in uh, indigenization of defense equipment and defense technologies. So why it is not a good idea to go for uh, guess, banning the import of the equipments and uh, what are the problems? Why uh, till now we haven't what you can say uh, haven't able to create a domestic infrastructure or domestic putting the capacities and capabilities to manufacture the different defense equipment so read this article it's a very very important article cut this article and put it in paper three topic uh, that is called the india's internal security challenges right so it's a very important article what are the problems in front of the india in for going for such type of initiative that is banning the import equipments going to the next So in Assam, assistant professor book for Facebook post on Ram. So he must have put some what against the post or messages on the Facebook. So he has been arrested. Just to check it out which section can be used for such type of what against the article that is mentioned here. There is one more article related to the environmental impact assessment. We have seen that recently the government is planning to make some amendments to the environmental impact assessment act. So draft EIA can undo hard won environmental gains. Rahul Slams Center. So senior Congress leader Rahul Gandhi on Sunday said that he draft essential impact assessment 2020 notification, which has been placed by the government for public feedback, is disgraceful and dangerous and has the potential to undo the hard fought gains won over the years in the battle to protect the environment. So we know that he the environmental impact assessment is a 
process through which the impact by the projects on the environment is assessed and what you can say the clearance is required but as for this new changes so the clearances are diluted the rules and what you can say the provisions of the environmental impact assessment guidelines have been diluted by the 2020 guidelines and as for Rahul Gandhi it is what you can say uh, it is going to be what you can say create a problem to the environmental issues in India so read this article what are the objections what are the issues why the opposition parties criticizing the government on the recent amendments which is proposed in the draft environmental impact assessment so read this article take some points and put it in your paper two topic or paper three topic sorry there is conservation uh, and what you can say the protection because question can be asked in the uh, can be asked in the mains exam so according to our such bharat Prop uh, propagation government if labeled strategic highly polluting industries such as coal mining and other mining will no longer require environmental impact assessment neither will highways or railway lines passing through dense forests and other eco sensitive areas and that will result in the massive hacking down of the tree that is what is mentioned here so the proposed environmental impact assessment will not require tia for coal projects and also for the road projects in the dense forest that is what is mentioned here so just read it out obviously it has some political uh, what you can say the angle but again you you will come to know what are the objection to the coming uh, what is upcoming environmental impact assessment taking a going to the next point we'll go directly for the today's uh, what you can say the editorial So RSS in the time of COVID, from plasma donation to conducting last rites. That is explained here how RSS is working during such type of COVID uh, pandemic. That is explained here. So just read it out. Going to the next page, uh, an uneven recovery. So services are seeing a greater fall with job losses, localized lockdowns, holding back demand, and sharpening the challenge. So this article is related to the decreasing employment rate in India that is what is mentioned here so uh, this article you can cut and put it in paper 3 topic uh, growth development and employment so we will read it this house which will help us in understanding the current situation of the Indian economy during the lockdown from the lows observed in April economic activity in India has gradually climbed up in the weeks and months thereafter that is in the month of uh, May and June and July we know that the activities have been started so there is one term used in the newspaper that is called as green shoots so green shoots means that economic activity have been uh, initiated while uncertainty looms over the face of the recovery some indicators suggest that economic activities have leveled off their levels the picture that emerges is of an uneven two paced recovery the recovery in the manufacturing sector especially in some segments appears to be far greater as compared to pickup in the services sector so manufacturing sector recovery is there but services sector is not recovering so this trend is observed in purchasing sorry, in purchasing manager index that is pmi for the two sectors after plummeting to record a low of 24.7 in april the pmi manufacturing rose to 47.3 in june dipping marginally thereafter to 46 in july so in comparison, the PMI services, which plumbed to low 5.4 in April, has limped there on touching to 34.2 in July. So it is unlikely that the gap between the two will narrow significantly in the near term. So that is what is mentioned here. The data is related to the PMI and the data related to the purchasing managers in the explained here. So this is what you can say uneven recording. So sometimes the demand is increasing, sometimes the production is decreasing, increasing. That is what is happening in this during these two, three months. So faced with the grim income prospectus, households have curbed their discretionary spending. So we know that, uh, you know, there was one term which was what you can see, uh, which was what you can see seen uh, in the newspaper that is uh, about what you can see the discretionary spending, right? One second. Huh? Yes, Pramoda. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. I have seen the message. Sorry. Okay. Yes, no problem, no problem, no sure. Thanks, 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 thanks. 
ओके सो वी नो दैट कि ड्यू टू दिस ड्यू टू इन दिस व्हाट कैन से द ग्रीन प्रोस्पेक्टस देयर वाज वन टर्म व्हिच वाज मेंशनड इन दिस इयर्स बजेट व्हिच सेज दैट द गवर्नमेंट रिलाइड ऑन द डिस्क्रिशनरी स्पेंडिंग डिस्क्रिशनरी स्पेंडिंग मींस ऑफ कि rather than increasing the taxes the government has what we can say not increase the taxes and allow the people to decide where they want to spend the money so the discretionary spending will be what we can say reduced now that is what is mentioned here so households have curbed their discretionary spending services non essential in particularly have suffered a disproportionately from this all in demand <coughs> adding to that is the fear of the moving in crowded places <coughs> sorry which is also constraining consumption of services such as restaurants and hospitality travel and tourism and others despite easing of the lockdown restriction so we know down so crowded places in which is also constraining consumption of services such as restaurants and hospitality travel and tourism and other despite easing lock easing lot of restriction so we know that ki the manufacturing is increasing but the services are not increasing services like restaurants hospitality travel tourism so there are several indications to this effect for instance reports in this paper reveal that despite restaurants and eateries being allowed to reopen more than 60% of the licensed eateries in prominent areas of delhi continue to remain shut and are yet to renew their trade held licenses the effects of this collapse in demand of services and non essential manufacturing on jobs and incomes are quite visible so as reported in this paper 40 of the bse 100 companies that have announced their results for the first quarter of the current financial year have seen a decline in their aggregate employee expenditure so since the employees have been cut down the what you can say the jobs have been cut down the employee expenditure has also been reduced the mitigation of the extent of losses incurred during this period will reflect the quarterly gdp estimates then obviously the gdp estimate will also be reduced in this year so in the hotels uh, trade transport communication and services related to the broadcasting and the financial and real estate and professional services category so the near term prospectus don't appear in promising with income and job losses self imposed restriction on the moment and localized lockdowns to deal with the spread of the covid-19 pandemic continue to influence consumption patterns demand for services is likely to remain muted in such scenario both individuals and businesses are likely to continue to be risk averse much will depend on the success in containing the spread of covid-19 pandemic so that is what is explained here that why the jobs are not uh, increasing because of the decrease in the services sector as well as non essential services are what you can say in the problem and majority of these jobs in india are are coming from this particular sector so that is what is mentioned here then going to the right hand side article there is an article written by prachi misra about the fall and rise so while global recovery could lift india's economy in 2021 domestic drivers for the growth are still unclear so we know that ki there are some domestic drivers of the growth for the india domestic drivers means what ki domestic demand obviously the global demand demand from the other countries also increase the production or gdp but at the same time we need to focus more on the domestic drivers for the growth so there there was one question in 2016 mains exam for not 2016 2017 mains exam that which are what are the drivers for the growth of the economy so there are various drivers external drivers as well as the internal drivers which are called as domestic drivers so which are those domestic drivers for the growth of the country that is explained also and the these growths what are the issues related to the domestic driver is also given so read this article cut this article and put it in paper 3 topic growth and development of the country so what are the problems and what are the challenges and what are the drivers of the indian growth that is explained here you just read it out and what you can say uh, read it and uh, put it in paper 3 topic fine ठीक है गोइंग टू द नेक्स्ट पेज हे देयर इज वन आर्टिकल रिलेटेड टू द चेंजेस इन द बुक्स बाय मेनी ऑडिटर्स ऑफ द स्टेट बोर्ड्स एज वेल एज द सीबीएसई बुक अ डीफ ईयर टू टैगोर व्हाई द डिसीजन टू कैंसिल विश्व भारती स्प्रिंग एंड विंटर फेस्टिवल इज डिस्टर्बिंग सो जस्ट रीड इट आउट व्हाई इट इज डिस्टर्बिंग एज पर द राइटर going to the next article written by venkaiah naidu who is the vice president of india an august lesson 
and emotionally integrated India offers the best defense against both internal and external threats and challenges. So paper three topic challenges to the internal security as well as external security of India. So what are those challenges and how an integrated India could offer a best defense, integrated means United Nation, integrated nations can create a best of what you can say defense against both internal and external threats and challenges. So very, very important article for paper three topic internal uh, security challenges to the India. So in the month of August, we have Independence Day. There are so many things in the uh, which has happened in the month of August that is what you mentioned here. The adjective August means respected and impressive, something special. The month of August has special significance in the history of modern India. The freedom struggle came into fruition on August 15, 1947. Five years prior to that, the Quit India movement was launched. The clarity on call to do or die by Mahatma Gandhi on August 8th. On the 5th of this month, construction of the Ram Temple in Ayodhya commenced. So these events were culmination of the long drawn struggle that offer certain lessons for the present and the future. So it's a very, very important article. And we know whenever Venkar Naidu writes an article, I always say that this is the best example how to write essay in the UPSC exam. Although it's a different thing, the essay is not uh, exactly written by the Vice President of India, but obviously it has been written by the officers who, is the, who, who might be a secretary to the Vice President of India. So just read this article and it will be a best example how to write the essay in the UPSC exam. So read this article. It can also help you in understanding what are the challenges for the Indian internal security as well as challenges. So one of the important problems is about the uh, communalism uh, is one of the important challenges. So how these challenges can be fought against, that is what is explained in this article. So cut this article, put it as a model essay. Right hand side, there is an article, The New Consumer. We will have to see how which and watch changes to the spend and support uh, the growth curve. So we are discussing that in many a days uh, there have been what you can say the talks about what you can say expenditure of the government and increase the support for the growth curve. So how the spend and support the growth curve that is expanded, how the growth of the Indian economy can be increased, that is what is explained here. So read this article also. Going to the next article written by Karan Thapur, who was a senior journalist and he is a senior journalist as well. So the contempt test, court must remember, it is supreme because it's final, not because it is infallible. So we know that in the political structure of India, the Supreme Court is considered as the Supreme Court of India. Why? Because it is a final court, because there is no any other court about the Supreme Court. That is why it is final. But it doesn't mean that the Supreme Court can never be wrong. It doesn't mean that the judgment given by the Supreme Court of India can be what you can say uh, should be a final or it cannot be challenged or it cannot be criticized. So we have seen that recently there was one uh, Supreme Court lawyer, Prashant Bhushan, has uh, criticized the Supreme Court's what you can say the inaction during the COVID-19 situation, especially inaction of the Supreme Court related to the bills which have been not given to many what you can say the social activists as well as the political activists, which they have a constitutional right. So in the name of pandemic, their constitutional right of getting the bail has not been fulfilled. So for that reason, one Supreme Court lawyer has criticized the Supreme Court. And for that reason, the contempt of court case has been started against him. So in that context, in that background, the article is written by Karan Thapur. So he says that the court must remember that the Supreme Court is supreme because it is final and not because it is infallible. Infallible means uh, not because it is infallible. Infallible means it even Supreme Court can also be wrong. And that is the reason we know that the, that the Constitution of India also has a provision of reviewing the judgment of the Supreme Court by itself. Right? Suppose if there is judgment is given by the Supreme Court, then Supreme Court can also go for reviewing of the judgment given by it. So that is a very, very important aspect of this. So read this article. I'm expecting a question in the main exam of this particular point or this particular issue related to the judiciary. So in paper two, there is one topic called issues related to judiciary functioning. So you can cut this article and put it in the paper three topic issues of the judiciary in India. Fine. Any doubts about this particular point? It's a very, very important point. Question can be asked in the main exam related to this particular issue of the judiciary. Any doubts? Check it. Going to the next page, that is no. 
So we are going to the next page, that is extend page, how to enroll in a vaccine trial. So if you want to volunteer yourself for a vaccine trial, then how you can re-enroll yourself, that is what is mentioned here. Who are the volunteers chosen for a trial and how? As trials progress for three major vaccine candidates, a look at recruitment and trial process, the risk involved and the safeguards check. So who is a volunteer? What are the eligibility criteria? Who can volunteer himself for the vaccine trial? What has been modified since? How does one enroll? And what happens after they register? And do volunteers get paid for that? And uh, what are the risks involved in that? And can a clinical trial go wrong? And what happens if it goes wrong? So all these things that I mentioned, if someone interested in uh, like to volunteer himself to what I can say to go for a vaccine trial, you can read it out. And uh, you, if you want, uh, before going for such type of trial, you need to know what are the different what I can say the procedure for enrolling oneself in a vaccine trial. So I will read it out because I'm interested in uh, what you can say, uh, volunteering myself in vaccine trial. So I'll read it out in short. Okay, going to the next page, how language leads to gender bias in science. So that is explained here. So language and science. So read it out if you want to understand. Then going to the next page, defense embargo list, the military equipment government stays to impose. So it is, it is mentioned here, which military equipments have been banned and why it is done. That is explained here. So just read it out. On ideas page, the viral Acharya is at uh, the interview about the uh, current situation of the Indian economy. That is can't make transfer to household in COVID because we haven't an open debit on fisc. Former Reserve Bank of India Deputy Governor Viral Acharya talks about how to revive trust and faith of the depositors in the Indian banking system because we know that the people have lost the faith and trust in the banking system. And that is what is mentioned here. So blames push for short-term growth for the conflicts between the government and RBI and calls for an independent fiscal council to wet the government expenditure and budget. So fiscal council should be created to decide about the government's budget that is explained here. So we have a monetary policy committee. We also have a GST council, but we do not have a fiscal council. So he is calling for a creation of an independent fiscal council which will give advice to the government on expenditure and the budget. That's a very important point here is mentioned. You can use this point in answer writing of the main exam. So we, are, we have already discussed about what all these, what you can say the issues in there going on, just read it out. Going to the next page, uh, today's economics page, I'll directly go, we are left with only one minute. So let's finish within this one minute. Okay, so volume of transaction via UPI source, 10 times compared to the IMPS. So UPI, that is a uh, unified payment interface and IMPS, that is uh, immediate payment system something. So the volume has been increased for UPI compared to IMPS, that is explained. You need to know what is UPI and you need to know what is IMPS. Question have been already asked, but you need to go and check it out. Question can be asked in the mains as well as in the prelims exam. Then uh, check it. Coal import falls by 43%, that is explained here. Then uh, June quarter, even as mutual funds and FPIC dip in holding, the national stock exchange companies, retail investor raised their 30 month long time. Anyways, uh, Bharat Net equipment uh, shifting, BBNL, CSC agreed to iron out differences, work together. So we know there are some problems, there are some issues being faced by the Bharat Net project, which is trying to create a broadband connectivity in the rural area. That is what is explained here. So you just read, read this out. What are the problems in the Bharatnet Bharat project? Take care. So this is all about for the today's newspaper. We'll stop it here. Tomorrow we'll continue again on the same time. Any doubts? Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, we'll continue tomorrow. Thank you. Sir.